All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is January 27th, 2023. And as you will have seen from the title of the video, we're like in what, 10 day countdown now? Um, I believe if that's the way the title is going to be led, I think that's what it's going to be along those lines. Well, brothers and sisters, as you know, as we've been sharing, uh, you know, we did a live show uh, a couple days ago over on Interrupts 165 as well. And we just chatted about a bunch of things in relation to um, uh, chosen and elect and called and excuse me, and it was just a really good time and and just sharing and chatting about these things and how close we are. Man, it is so exciting. You know, I know it's easy to get excited when we get close to very high watch dates. And every high watch date, because we don't just call out random high watch dates, as you guys know, we are watching and praying and seeking and doing it according to the scriptures as they are revealed and open to us and as many of you know i believe we are the only ministry as far as i know with everybody around the world that i've ever asked we are the only ministry that i'm aware of that has continued to seek the 70th year of israel you know, I was I was sharing with this. This is a little side note, but you know, I was sharing this with my wife again just before coming on, because you know, we're we're excited, right? We're trying to we're trying to to discern and and really understand and want to make sure, to the best of our ability, of everything that's been shared, that we've really understood these things. You know, we know Psalms ninety and ten. It's not a maybe. It's not a kind of. We know Psalms 90 and 10 is the revelation of 14 years in one verse of scripture given to us. And here's the thing I was talking to my wife about. There, there's certain things that <laughs> you, you just can't get around. 70 is 70 once you understand where to count from. And Psalms 90 and 10, and this is what I was telling my wife, that Psalms 90 and 10 is a piece of scripture that we cannot play our way around especially because we know it we know it says the days of our years are from 70 and if by reason of strength which means what labor sorrow it means tribulation travail so your years are from 70 to 80. now 70 to 80 is what what is 70 to 80 is 70 to 80 let me see where it is does 70 to 80 mean you you count from the number 70 and you say 70 71 no that would be 11 years you see nobody does that and you know why because if 70 was like zero year zero what do we do the moment after zero is complete 70 or zero is complete the moment after starts the 71st year that by the time you get to 71 and you say, ah, it's 71 years, or I'm 71 years old, you've already completed 71 years. And you know what's really interesting? If you go to the BC side of things, then what happens is they would say this, the beginning where on the AD side, you say this is day one, and when you turn one, you've completed one. But if you were on the AD, uh, on the BC side of things, they would say it was 1 BC. So if this is zero, they would say 1 BC was over here. And so it would be 1 BC, and then you complete that 1 BC year. See how interesting that is? I was telling my wife, I, sa I feel silly when I talk about it sometimes, but it becomes such an important and, and straightforward simple yet misunderstood peace so often because if it was an event happened in 1 BC did it happen between 2 BC and 1 BC no it happened between 1 BC and 0 because they called it 1 BC even though it still was playing out until the year 0 but what do we do on the AD side of things if something happens in the 71st or in the first year 
if something happens in the first year, do they allocate it to this piece right here? No. They say this is the first year that things happened in. But it's wrong. It's totally wrong because it starts as soon as 70 or zero is done. Day one of the new year starts. It's something so simple, but we confuse it all the time. And this is a chart. I think it's in the description box below. This is a chart to help everybody understand Psalms 90 and 10. We've got it. We've understood it. You see, as soon as 70 is complete, 70 to 80, nobody says 70, 71, 72 and goes to 80. If I say to anybody, count from 70 to 80, they would say 71, 72. But when they get to 80, they would still say 80, but they don't say 70. You see, because 70 is complete, which means when 70 is complete, the 71st year begins. And at the 71st year, one year is complete. We now know the changes have been made. It goes from spring, from Nissan to Nissan. So where is this 70th year that comes to an end? As we know from the recent videos, it will end at Nissan of 2023. Nissan of 2023 is the 70 to 80 year count beginning of the 14 years of the end of days. Seven years of seals and seven years of trumpets. This is why it's so over the top exciting right now. Because at no other time in human history is this going to be possible. This is it. There's just no other time where they've been out of the nation for almost, what, 1,800 and some odd years, and they come back in. And the Lord told them three years, the fourth to me, and the fifth year forward is yours. I'm going to do a chart. One of the brothers had asked me to maybe do a little chart of it, and I just not, I just didn't get around to doing it before this video. So maybe I'll get it for the next video just to be able to give people a visual of what this plays out like. What, how does this 70 complete this year? How is it the 70th year at the new year of trees for the Lord? And how is it the 70th year of Nissan? I know that I've explained it. I know that I've broken it down in recent videos. But I want to give you a visual so that you can see it and understand it for yourselves without a glitch in your understanding. You will know it. You will see it. And you will say, oh, my Lord. If it was from planting day one to the end of that year, they planted at Tuba Shavat, 1949. They had now a king by Nisan in March of 1949. They now officially began year one. And by 1950, at New Year of Trees, that first year was complete at the New Year of Trees. Yet it was still in the first year because Nissan hadn't come around again. When you understand that, you realize there is no other time in human history. And the Lord revealed how it could be at Tuba Shavat, the connection, when we know it's 50 days, then 14 years, and then the 50th Jubilee. There's a 50-day period that comes first. This 70 that I'm talking about is the Nisan of the year of them in Israel from when they had a king and it officially began, <coughs> excuse me, in Nisan of 1949. The 70 that I'm talking about now, which is the new year of trees, and we're going to bring in more detail and show more events and connections and, and try to discern this. And I'm going to bring about more understanding to to things that we were talking about in the live show that a lot of people hadn't seen yet. And I'm going to go into greater detail in explaining it because it kind of seems like a group may take part in something. Okay. We'll see though. We'll see if they take part or if the Lord is having a meal with them later, or maybe what it's saying is that they will take part. And that's the reason for the typology in the story. 
you'll see what I'm saying when we get to it. We'll go into detail. But when you understand these things, I want everybody to know, especially new people, the Lord himself told us that he would do something and it would be four months earlier. And in understanding this four months earlier, that it equals 70, it means the well, it means uh, the almond tree, it means the new year of trees. When you see these things and understand, how could we not be excited? If you've been tracking this ministry for at least a little while, you should be jumping up and down. You should be rejoicing. Because, yes, we've been excited in previous ones. Yes, we were tracking Psalms 90 and 10 with Leviticus in the previous year. But now we've got it complete. I think I even spoke about it in the last video. It's not a little bit understood. So, uh, uh, Leviticus 19 and the understanding of it is completed. Psalms 90 and 10 is completed. These are no longer mysteries to us. They have been revealed understandings. And it is so exciting. You know, it, it, thanks to my wife, you know, I don't need firing up once I get a video going because I love digging into the word. I love sharing it. I love helping you guys understand and, and getting you on fire to dig into these things and seek his word more yourselves. Because when you understand better, you're more prone to dig and be excited by seeking and searching for yourself and seeing that these things are true and finding tidbits on your own. It's so exciting. But lo and behold, my wife, you know, I start talking to her before video and I'm starting to get all pumped up even before I started, right? Because, you know, it was this conversation within that 70 to 80 and this conversation that this 70 to 80 is the evidence that it's not at 71 years, that, that the year count doesn't go from one and then start, but that it goes from the completion of 70 and the day one is the midst of the first year. And when that year is done, that's called one year complete. You see, that'll be the 71st. This proves it, that there's no way around it. And the only other thing that could mean is that this year, Tuba Shavat and Nissan of 2023 are the 70s of Israel. The 70s of the Lord for Tuba Shavat and the 70 to Nissan. Complete. Completed. It's so exciting. For anybody that's new, you will have just heard me say something that's that's probably caught you off guard right off the bat. You'll have heard me say 14 years of tribulation, seven years of seals, and seven years of trumpets. If you're new, this is where you want to come. You want to come to the playlist link right here. You want to see this playlist series right here called the Revealed End Time Study Note Series. Click on this, and you're going to see this playlist show up. There's 11 videos in here, and you want to start with these three videos. A 30-minute Bible study of the Gospels, a 30-minute Bible study of, of the 14 years, and a big video, almost three hours long, to help you understand how it was all missed, why it was all missed. It was all in the Lord's timing, but the answer is it's all because of Matthew. We've all been taught everything from a foundation of Matthew. And when you don't know the first video, which is an intro to begin to help you understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you'll never realize that because everything you've been taught comes from the foundation of Gospel of Matthew, all of your perspective is seen from the eyes of the house of Judah. So what happens is you think there's only 7,000 years since creation. You believe there's only seven years of tribulation. You believe everybody calling Jesus Lord is going pre-trip. In the great multitude rapture, everybody in the church is going first. All of those things have been skewed in understanding because we had all been taught from God, Matthew's gospel for hundreds and hundreds of years. And why? Because video one had never been understood until about five years ago as it started to be revealed in this ministry and this 30-minute bible study 
is the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to realize for the first time in your life that Luke is speaking to the bride of Christ. Mark is speaking to the sleeping church, which is the Gentiles grafted in with the house of Israel that's scattered throughout the earth. That's why it's called the world or the church or the house of Israel, the Gentiles grafted in. And Matthew is to the house of Judah. Luke is pre-trib. Mark is post-trib. Matthew is, uh, sorry, Luke is pre-trib. Mark is mid-trib. And Matthew is post-trib. Luke's group goes above the 14 years. So in that 50-day period before the 14 years really kick off, the pre-trib of Luke, the bride of Christ, has gone first, and there's a worker group that remains. Mark's group is the group, is the great multitude rapture. And isn't it interesting because Mark is the church, is the world, is the sleeping church, those who aren't really living in the spirit and seeking and, and diligently in the Lord. That's the bulk of the church, the 90% of the church and the world that will remain during seals. Some will fall away and more will come in, but that will complete at the end of the six years of seals. In that seventh year, those who have called on the name of the Lord will go to his holy mountain and will go in the rapture of the great multitude to paradise. The first group is going to the third heaven, or some would, you could just say heaven, but it's the third heaven. Mark is going to paradise, and Matthew, theirs is the kingdom of heaven on earth. The kingdom of heaven on earth. Theirs is the city. They're getting their millennial reign promise. Pre, mid, post are all true, and you're going to witness that within these videos like this one right here. You're going to see the typology and the triumphal entry, the transfiguration and the resurrection story in Luke, Mark, and Matthew that are all typologies of his return uh, at the beginning of seals when he comes as the son of man for 40 days. Yep, he's coming as the son of man for 40 days. You can watch this video to begin to understand it. Then when he comes at the end of seals on heavenly Mount Zion, and then when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, you're going to see it revealed here. All of this begins with the understanding of this 30-minute intro video Bible study. And as you see me read from it, you can go to the description box below and you can go in there. You can click the link to our website where you can get all of the info, all of the videos, easily download one click and it downloads. All of these study notes are there as well as in the description box below. You can join us in the forum. We've got like 1,100 people from around the world, all like-minded brothers and sisters watching, praying, seeking, you know, in the word, Bible studies, news, events, everything going on. When you get to this second video, you're going to realize because of the revelation of who the Gospels are speaking to, you're going to suddenly understand why there were differences, so many differences especially within the synoptic gospels that you've been taught your whole life were just perspectives. They weren't. They were prophecy. All of them were prophecy. And this is just a taste. At Ministry Revealed and in the description box below, there's a link also to our book. You can download it in free PDF. You can get it on Amazon if you want, if you like to have a book to flip the pages and make notes. And you will see for yourself in greater detail what is spoken about here. This second video is the intro, uh, is, is the revelation in the intro to prove and to show everybody that the truth is two sets of sevens. And the reason that the first seven was missed and that everything was combined into one with seals and trumpets is because everybody's perspective was from Matthew. Nobody really understood who Mark was speaking to and even less understood who Luke was speaking to. It is going to blow your mind because once you understand it, all sorts of things open up in Scripture. I mean like crazy. In this ministry, it goes all the way back to the story of creation and you realize that Luke, Mark, and Matthew is the story of creation. This, the, the, the gap theory of Genesis 1, verse 1 and 2, that's the pre-trib group. That's the Luke group, the spirit group. Then you have the days of creation. That's the Mark group, the light group. And then you have the flesh in Genesis 2 and the thousands of years that we're in. That's the Matthew group. And that's why I say we're in their portion right now. 
Why do you think we're to pray for the Jews, lift up the Jews, do all these things for the Jews? We're living in their portion. It's fascinating. And we've got a video on that called it's all, uh, it, it's a fractal or it's all a fractal. It is mind blowing and it reveals the true creation story and how long it's been since in the beginning. I'm telling you, man, these things will blow your mind. They are so over the top. You know, uh, sorry, a little coffee sip here. I don't mean to slurp, sorry. <laughs> so we've been talking in this ministry, you know, with events that are taking place in the world, we've shown a number of them now for a long time, right? Um, I've talked lately a fair bit. I, I bring up, you know, the very first video I did on the Mark of the Beast, and we showed a clip, you know, Netanyahu, and they're implementing uh, the PCR testing to check DNA when people come in. And literally, that was my first video that when they do that, this is when we know it. it's it's the system being built for the Mark of the Beast. At no other time in human history was this possible. And it's being implemented all over the world quietly right now and it's being broadcast already in israel it's absolutely incredible well what's another thing we've talked about well there's been a number of things but one of the other things we spoke about years ago was and i was looking for the video i just can't remember for the life of me which video because it was a long time ago probably like four years ago and then once in a while i bring it up here and there and what it was is let me show you here let's go to Daniel chapter 7. We can go to Revelation 13 as well, but you see the four beasts, right? The four beasts starts at the red horse rider, okay? The red horse rider is the beginning of the 14 years and the time when Israel will be compassed about for a few days and then attacked. You guys are going to see this. It's so exciting. So the lion we have shown is Assad. The bear we've shown, and everybody knows, that that's the obvious one, right? The bear is Russia. Well, the leopard is something that a lot of people have debated. And I've been saying for years that the leopard is Germany. Germany and, and part of that whole European system up there, that Germany is the one really heading it because they're the ones that control the money. They got all the money. Germany is the leopard. And of course, the fourth beast has to do with the Antichrist taking over and taking over all of these together. Well, the leopard, when I talk about the leopard and when I was talking on this years ago, I would say that the leopard is Germany. And one of the, the my number one reason for it being Germany is because of the leopard. And people would say, well, the leopard could be like somewhere in Africa. They were thinking maybe through nations in Africa coming together. No. It was all about the leopard tank. During World War II and this design and what they've done with the leopard tank is, is, was spoken about everywhere because it was on another level compared to everybody else's. And they had so much trouble against them in World War II. This leopard was all about a symbol for Germany. And we've talked about it a lot. So here we are seeing these things like, the PCR machine that I spoke about five and a half years ago, and the PCR machines are being used, that they would check it to test and use against DNA, that they would store it in data banks that they had with credit scores and with health records. Literally, what I was speaking about five and a half years ago, and then COVID comes about, and they're using PCR machines, and they're testing it, and they're using it to put into their health record system. I mean, come on. Well, now we've taken one step closer. Do you think the bear is going to suddenly, do you think the bear is just going to turn away? Do you think the bear is just going to suddenly turn and tuck tail and run with, with the war that's going on over in uh, Ukraine? No, because what's happening? Nations are building up in Ukraine now. And what are they doing? Well, let me show you one example, because guess what has come in the news again? Well, how about that? The Leopard 2 from Germany to Ukraine. Germany says it will send 14 Leopard tanks to Ukraine, but they're going to send way more than that. That's only the beginning. It says Germany, okay? This is from, uh, is it Germany Ambassador or something like that? Germany will initially provide 14 Leopard A6 battle tanks and green light Leopard 2s 
from European partners, the goal is to quickly assemble two battalions. Do you think this is going away? Do you think this is going away? I can promise you it's not going away. And why isn't it going away? Because 70 years of the Nissan of Israel is coming to an end. All of these things are now playing out. Do you think any of it is going away? Not a chance. Let me show you something else people like. We don't talk about this much. I don't really care about this stuff too much, right? But it's been a big deal within prophecy and prophetic communities to look at this. And I'm going to show you a little clip because this has just gone off into the background. Every once in a while, we bring it up. You know, we showed towards the end of it. You guys remember, they'll say that this, this guy is supposed to be the representation of the Antichrist coming on the scene. And we've proven that it's not. That in fact, it's a representation where the whole world is saying it's the Antichrist. The Muslims are saying, see, that's the Dajjal. The Dajjal is the Christian Antichrist. But what they forget to tell you is that the Muslims believe he's only coming for 40 days. What did I tell you? If you're new, I showed you. We've got a video that shows that the Son of Man in the above 14 years, the Son of Man is going to be here for, 14, uh, for 40 days and he's going to be rejected. There's going to be a group of followers that will follow him and will be given understanding. And then what? And then he's gone. And the Muslims are calling him the Dajjal. And the Christians that will be left are going to think he's the Antichrist because they think Antichrist comes first. He does come soon, but he doesn't come immediately. You see? So we've shown things in this, and we could show things that other people haven't been able to understand. This is another one. A lot of people have been talking about it, and now it makes sense. You see this white rabbit? A lot of people were trying to understand why did it have the white rabbit in this imagery and you'll see as we get going it lights up there's a light that's focused on the white rabbit and yes other people have already spoken about this but i'm going to show you another piece that really ties it together to where we're at right now of course the symbology of the bride in white right the pre-trib bride in white and what happens is you know one of the things and one of the reasons i i thought of bringing this up was you know my wife is chinese and chinese new year my wife uh she makes a uh, crafting uh, uh she makes cards she does scrapbooking and stuff like that and she was making cards for the family and friends for chinese new year and of course it's the year of the rabbit as everybody knows and she was making these cute little white rabbits on her cards and so a lot of people have been talking about it because chinese new year year of the rabbit and there it is and it's highlighted now why is it a little bit more important why does it really apply to this time well let's have a look there it is highlighted bam there it is brothers and sisters you see that do you guys remember talking about this this is something when we've talked about um this uh, uh ipad go 2 we we shared it a while back like a long time ago where we were talking about the 70 right like it's in a mirror it's a it's a reflection and you see a seven and zero but what do you see it's not finished the circle of the zero is incomplete why do you think that is because what's going to take place look at what look at what it shows next okay the apple splits open, right? And what do people call this? They call it, they believe that this is a representation of Jerusalem being divided, right? That they're going to split Jerusalem, the apple of his eye, right? Well, watch what happens. When we look at where we are, okay? Remember, what is Tuba Shavat this year? What's Tuba Shavat? It's the completion of 70 years of the new year of trees for the Lord for the people. So it was four years and from the fifth year forward, it was Israel's. This is the anniversary of that 70th year done. This is why we're so excited. And then what happens? Then 
70th year of Israel is right here. The the completing of Israel, right? And then the seven the the seventy first year starts here. What was that seventieth first year? This is the beginning of the seventy first year. What is it showing? Right here. This begins the fourteen years. So what does that mean? That means all throughout this, we're still in the seventieth year until right here. And when we shared this on this iPad Go thing, you know, a couple, three years ago, we thought we were at the 70th then, but we also knew there was this 50 day period, right? This connection before the 70 years began. And so we understood this completion of the 70 years. What do we know happens at the beginning of the 50 days? while still in the 70 years of Israel. We know, of course, a very famous chapter for us now in Isaiah 9, that a light affliction, an attack is coming to two cities in northern Israel. And it's probably going to be Haifa and Tel Aviv. It's going to be a short Middle East attack. It's going to be devastation. And it's going to be short-lived. It's going to be with Iran and those of the Iran against Israel. It'll be a short war. Sir, uh, um, uh, 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 Tel Aviv and Haifa are going to be badly destroyed. All right? So what do you think is going to happen? Well, it's going to happen within the remaining 70 that is not yet complete that they're going to make what? They're going to call for what? A covenant? Are they are they going to make a, not a covenant, but are they going to make a decree? Are they going to proclaim a decree to allow a, 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 a rest within Israel and allow a building for the temple? Split the land to settle this dispute of this attack that took place? Because that attack is going to be very devastating. Tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of people dead. You know, it, it, it's one thing to just talk about these things, but we're 10 days away. We're 10 days away. Maybe even sooner. We'll, we'll touch a little bit on that today. Maybe even sooner. Everything on earth is about to change. This first attack that will happen somewhere around here, and possibly if the 50 starts here you'll see why i'm talking about that a little later okay so between here and here israel in the north is going to be attacked before the 70 is complete which is why that zero wasn't completed you following which is why the zero wasn't completed and then the splitting they're not going to split jerusalem for no reason Millions of people will have vanished. An attack will take place on Israel. And to settle everything down, they're going to come to an agreement to allow rebuilding to take place. It's coming. It's coming, guys. I'm going to delete some of these because I got a whole slew of tabs opened up. And so what do we know happens after that? Well, then we know Israel is going to be surrounded and then they're going to be attacked and destroyed in this area here when they get surrounded by uh, Syria from the north. Okay. Again, this brings us back to Isaiah chapter 9. The first attack, it's a light affliction. The Son of Man is going to come. You see, the Son of Man, front of us, a, bo a child is born. Son of Man shows up. He's here for 40 days. He's the light in the darkness. And then Syria comes and those with them, and they're going to devour Jerusalem and Israel and so forth. They're going to be removed from the land, <coughs> excuse me, as we know, for the next seven years. This is the beginning of World War III when Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed. All of this is at hand. And the only reason we could boldly proclaim it is because we have continued to follow the 70 years of the Lord to the 70 years of Israel. It's unbelievable. It's crazy to understand. 
Now, what else do we know about these things? Well, remember at Tuba Shavat, we're going to touch on this too, because you see, they've got Tuba Shavat over here on the 15th. But I'm going to show you some things with the moon that shows us it's actually on the 14th. You're going to see the same thing when it comes to Nissan. They've got the dark moon right here and the crescent somewhere in here. Which is pretty interesting because if you'll remember in videos in the past, I've showed that every Nissan one, all the Nissan, not every, but virtually everyone, and the ones that I had shown for months and months on end uh, in the past, when you go to Stellarium, you always see that they have Nissan one lined up at the dark moon. And then in the evening portion right here is when the crescent would become visible. Well, in this year, this is where it's dark moon. And then the second day would be automatically the beginning of the month on day two. So <clears throat> it, it's it's interesting that things could be shifted by a day. Does it really change the perspective of everything? No. It's still it's still within this time frame, right? All of this right here, this right here. This is the key time. So we're 10 days. This is an eight-day period. This is it. This is the end of the line. It's incredible. Let me show you this now. See that? February is called Snow Moon. Well, that's pretty interesting. One of our brothers shared this um, in the forum. I believe it was our brother Orlando shared it yesterday. And look at what it said. <coughs> and why does it matter to us? It says February's new moon is named after the snow covering the ground. Well, they could do that in, in January, right? Maybe December's a little bit early, but they could do it in January. But no, this one is called the full, uh, the snow moon is called the full moon. And look when it is. February 5th at 11.28, and I'm in Calgary. So 11.28 a.m. Calgary time on the 5th. So Calgary is Mountain Standard Time. That's right here, right? Just before noon on the 5th. Okay, so the full moon isn't really over here, but I guess in Israel, it might be the time of sunset. So they have it there on Tuba Shabbat, but it's it's really quite early. All right. So why does it matter? And why is this exciting? <coughs> Excuse me, that it's that the reason for its name is because the snow covering the ground. Well, we know it's exciting, of course, because we've got the book of Jasher, one of the apocryphal books, right? And this apocryphal book is talking about what? Enoch. And when Enoch was taken, look at what it says. It says, we're, we're going to read more of this, but I want to make this point in this. And we've shared this before. Um, and all those kings that went, uh, went to the place and they found the earth there filled with snow. They found there the earth filled with snow snow what is it called the snow covering the ground the earth covered in snow is the name of this full moon and this full moon called the earth is covering the ground or the snow is covering the earth or the ground is what it's also a year's end hello it's a year's end and for enoch what do we know about Enoch? Something else we all know about, okay? And all the days of Enoch lived upon the earth were 365 years. We've been looking at this play on years as days with Enoch as we have shown in the Gospels dozens of times in a number of places. From the story of the Ark to, to the story of the Transfiguration, I mean, many, many places, even to the two and a half approximate days that Christ was taken into the hands of sinful men, crucified and resurrected. The total story is about two and a half days. In trumpets, the second half of trumpets, it represents the two and a half years. We have shown this over and over and over again. So 365 years is a typology of 365 days. And guess what the new year of trees is? It's a year's end. So Enoch being taken at a year's end being 365 at the full moon when snow was covering the ground 
Hello. Making sense now, isn't it? Because it also had to be connected to a year's end. Why does why does Enoch matter in any of this? I know you guys have heard this a dozen times, but Enoch is important for us because the pre-trib bride of Christ is the Enoch group. You see, Enoch in Hebrews chapter 11 is the one before what? The Noah type 40 days of the Son of Man. Those who are translated, those who pleased God because they first, what? Had faith that he was God and that he was a rewarder, as we were talking about in the live show, getting your rewards, right? That the Lord was a rewarder of those who diligently sought him. And what's that comet going through representing? It's re representing the Lord coming and his reward is with him. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And what is it with Enoch? He was translated that he should not see death. Hello. Translated that he should not see death. That's the pre-trib bride of Christ. Before the 40 days of Noah, which are the type of typology of the 40 days of the Son of Man. All of these things are in order. It's awesome to see. You know... When, and, and if somebody wants to say something, so if you want to say like, oh, well, if you look at the book of Jasher, that's not in the Bible. Well, hold on a second. It was in the Bible. You see, the book of Jasher is even mentioned in Scripture. There are two mentions of it, one in Joshua 10 and one in 1 Samuel. Is it, uh, it is written in the book of Jasher. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? You're like, uh okay what where's the book of jasher we don't have it in the bible but it is an apocrypha and there it is they found the earth filled with snow at the year's end at the snow moon at 365 and the 70 of the lord Get excited, guys. Get excited. <laughs> Get excited. All right. So, so awesome. You guys can go look this up for yourselves, right? This is on uh, date time, dateandtime.com. I'm going to delete that now. And I'm going to delete that. That was just for my notes. That was to show you guys. Okay. Now, let me show you another exciting piece. And we're, we're going to get back to this as well uh, to show a little bit more in relation to the typology taking place in this story when Enoch is taken. But before we get there, I'm going to show you a couple more things. You guys will remember this. This was something our brother uh, Dennis found. He's down in Florida. He emails me regularly. And look at what he found. He noticed it in the last video when I was sharing about this. We've talked about it a few times, but look at what happens in Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 1, okay, we've shared how Jer Jeremiah first sees what? A rod of an almond tree. The almond tree, of course, as you all know by now, is the earliest to bloom, and it is that representation of the almond tree that is Tuba Shavat, the recognition of spring in the air, and it starts with the blossoming of the almond tree. There it is, right there. It means to watch. And we've gone into what this means to watch, right? Look at this. It means to watch, to be alert. Oh, look at this one. It means to hasten, to be sleepless. What is watching? It's the pre-trib group, those who are watching and praying to be accounted worthy to escape all these things. That shall come to pass, just like Luke 21, 36 says. That's the pre-trib escape group. Okay? So it's all related to the almond tree. It's all related to the well. It's all related to the Samaritan. Right? It's all recognized as watch. And what is it? Tuba Shabbat. When? The 70th coming to an end of 2023. But look at what our brother caught. It's Jeremiah chapter 1, 
verse 11. This is the key mention of the understanding. Then what is he, because you see, look what he sees next. After he sees the almond tree, we know that Syria, at the end of the 50 days, Syria, having compassed about, will then attack and destroy Jerusalem. And the seven years will begin and the Jews will be removed. And what is it? The next thing he sees is that seething pot from the north. See, and an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. This is the same as Isaiah 9 when Syria comes. This is the same as 2 Chronicles 24 when Syria comes with a small army. And you're going to see when Syria comes with a small army and begins to compass about, when do you think it's going to be? <laughs> you guessed it. It's going to be at the year's end. Hello. At the end of the year. It's, it's over the top. Which year's end? The same one as the almond tree? No. It's after. It's going to be the year's end of Israel completing 70. Do you understand there's no other 70 after this? <laughs> there's none. There is nothing after this. It's over. Well, <clears throat> the reason he caught that it was Jeremiah 1, verse 11, it's like month 1, the 11th day, right? Like January 11th. Why, does, why was this significant? Well, if you'll remember, I shared this. I shared this link about the, the, the almond trees blossoming. They started budding and in some areas started blossoming like a month early. It really is catching a lot of Israel off guard. They had no idea it would come this early. But even over here in Canada where I live, we're cold for this weekend. But then it starts to get nice again. But all of January, virtually from, well, right from the beginning all the way through till this weekend, has been all nice weather here. You know, like high 30s in, in, in American terms. All right? It's been like zero to plus five, plus 10 sometimes. So high 30s, even into the, well into the 40s. And in the middle of January or in January in Canada, in Calgary, dude, that is some nice weather. Because what happened? Everything started to happen earlier this year. We had crazy cold and snowstorms late, late November. So it has been a little bit early. Well, it was early even in Israel. You see, this was written on the 12th, but when did they see them blooming? January 11th, they started to bloom. So on January 11th, they started to bloom in Israel, and Jeremiah was 111, and on 111, the almond blossoms were seen. That's pretty cool, right? I thought that was very interesting. Well, don't forget, what does the almond tree also mean? It means to hasten. And this is what our brother Scott shared. So Scott is in the forum, and this is where you find all little nuggets and tidbits that people are digging into. And look at the word hasten. So verse, uh, verse 12, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen. The, these go together, okay? Here's the almond tree blossoming. Then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen. What is it about? being sleepless, watching, on the lookout. You have well seen. Pay attention, guys. You've been watching and praying and seeking. The almond tree is blossoming and you have well seen. For I will hasten my word to perform it. Well, what does that mean? Okay. I will hasten. See, there's that same word. I will hasten, be sleepless, alert, watch, but... What does hasten mean? This is what our brother Scott had shared. Let's have a look at this word hasten. This was an exciting find. Hasten means to quickly do something, all right? To, to, I'm going to bring it about now. Look at what it says. Cause something to happen sooner than otherwise would. <laughs> This is exactly what they were talking about with the almonds, with the, the blossoming. They literally are telling you it's a it, it's like it's a month 
early. They literally go on to tell you that in this article and in other articles in Israel talking about it, that it's essentially a month early. And if you ever, as we've talked about in recent videos, if you if you do research on when the almond blossoms generally blossom, it's it could be late January, early February. But in the recent five years that I was looking at, it was late in February, even into early March. I've showed pictures of it and, and the, the, the times of when these pictures were taken. And this one is early. And Jeremiah is telling you that the almond tree and it's 111 and the Lord is saying, I will hasten, I will bring it about sooner. And for what? For those who are watching, for those who are praying, who are seeking, who are diligent with me, I will cause something to happen sooner than otherwise would. Interesting, right? Well, it, it actually gets better than that. And you know why it gets better than that? Because in John chapter 4, where all this is connected to, was the story of that woman at the well, right? And if you remember John 4, 35, it says, say, say not ye there are yet four months, then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. We covered this, right? So what's happened? He's telling them, this was prophecy. He was telling them to look, the ground was white over there, why? Well, it was white one because it was the almond blossoms that were falling and that were making the ground white. But the other typology in the reference is that there's snow on the earth. That there's snow on the earth. They work hand in hand. But you remember what it said? Cause something to happen sooner than it otherwise would. So while everybody's expecting to have something to happen on a specific feast date, he's bringing about something earlier, which did happen earlier than it was supposed to was for the new year of trees, only to find out that he said that this harvest that he's talking about here, which is the feast of weeks harvest, he's saying is ready four months earlier. So what is it? He's hastened it to happen sooner than it otherwise would have. Because the pre-trib bride of Christ is the beginning. Remember Genesis chapter 1? Again, something I just talked about a moment ago. This whole gap theory creation portion is the spirit realm created. Those who are in Christ, those who were predestined, <coughs> excuse me, those who um, who have the Spirit of God in them, who are the co-heirs with Christ, the co-heirs, uh, the, the the heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. They were there before the, cre the the foundations of the earth. This is the representation of the Luke group. This, at the beginning of light is the day's creation for the Mark group. This is the beginning of the 14 years. This is the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. When he's that darkness, you see? When he's that light, come to shed darkness. Uh, sorry, come to shed light in the darkness. What was it that we just read in Isaiah 9? He comes to bring darkness. Uh, sorry, he comes to bring light in the darkness every place we've talked on that every place we see it is him coming to bring his light into the darkness at the beginning of his 40 days and that's why you have him made light here the father makes him light and when he's made light it talks about dividing the the light from the darkness and then what the day and the night and the darkness and what then it was day one this is before day one this is the beginning of his 40 days. And then when his 40 days are done, the 14 years begin. How does 
the Luke group begin this small portion of the above 14 years, the above 14,000 years. How does it start? In the beginning. What was the beginning, brothers and sisters? What was the beginning? Well, if John chapter 4 is telling us that this harvest is supposed to be ready in four months, but I'm telling you, look, the ground is white, i.e. the almond blossoms, i.e. snow for the snow moon. He's telling you that the feast of weeks is going to be observed four months earlier in this prophetic harvest that he was talking about. And what's he talking about? Giving wages to the fruitful. What does that mean? Rewards to the fruitful. The pre-trib, those who were watching, praying, who were diligently in him. Isn't that exactly what it talked about with Enoch? So it's happening sooner than the world expects. It's happening sooner. It's, it has, it's not even going to happen at the Feast of Weeks, which is truly the 15th day, right? The true Feast of Weeks is the 15th day of the third month. Exactly four months early is Tuba Shavat. This is exciting, guys. Because what is the Feast of Weeks? <clears throat> what does it represent? The beginning. The beginning. This is why the bride being co-heirs with Christ that were there before the foundation of the earth are co-heirs with Christ who was the beginning. <clears throat> what was the beginning? Taurus. This is over the top, man. I love this stuff. I can do this for hours and hours and hours a day. <laughs> it's just so powerful. It is so exciting. Man, see, it's all about Tuba Shavat, the new year of trees, the Lord's fruitful trees coming in. It's awesome. Let's keep going. We have also, <coughs> excuse me, you see, with Leviticus 19, let me get my bearings. Leviticus 19. Let's go to Leviticus 19. I know we've gone to Leviticus 19. You guys all know it like the back of your hand, right? <coughs> so we have Leviticus 19, all the trees. Okay. Now we're going to start to get into the, where is this cow, right? As we're getting close. <clears throat> we're only maximum 10 days away. But let's try to, <clears throat> excuse me, look a little bit deeper and see how much more light we can shed on this, how much more clarity we can be prepared for. All right? Because we know not all the bride is necessarily going, maybe a portion, right? That remnant bride, but do they get to go and then come back? Will it be glorified bodies? Right? If it's glorified bodies, well, that would be awesome, but we know some of them can still die. So let's see if we can see how much more clarity we can bring to this. Because as you guys know, it's not a mystery in the 40 days of the Son of Man and then there being three days left. That's the easy part. What we've been trying to understand really clearly is. It, are there going to be um, the, this, this beginning of the 50 days? Does the wedding happen first or does the wedding happen after? Well, when you, when you look into the wedding, I think what ends up happening is it's, it, <laughs> I, you see, it's like pulling out hair as, I try to, as we try to figure this out because you're going to see so many more things. We're going to add more into the mix here whether whether it's from the beginning but what you're going to see in an either case tuba shavat is the day that the going takes place 
the escape takes place, especially if we're to be as Enoch was. It gets very, very interesting. And what's what we see here, as we've covered a number of times, that see in the fourth year, right? I love it. Now we understand. This is what I was talking about earlier. And maybe on the next one, I'll do a chart because when you to, to be able to visually see what it means and how it could be in the year and yet they came in the land in 1948 but they didn't have a government yet they they voted the government in january they planted trees for the first time in february uh of 1949 and then he didn't take office until march of 1949 hence the year and their official beginning was at nissan he wasn't replacing a king he was the new king all right so we understand how this all works in and in and so forth now with the counting of the new year of trees it's three years the fourth year to the lord and then from the fifth year forward it was theirs 70 years from this first year of the fifth year is tuba shavat 2023 what happens at tuba shavat what is so special about tuba shavat well the harvest is brought to the Lord. The fruit bearing trees are brought to the Lord, right? The fruit is brought to him. Look at what it says. A celebration of thanksgiving for harvest. Okay. You guys remember this, the Hebrew 1984. It means to be clear, to shine, to show forth, right? This is the bride dressed in clear, bright white. And it says what? Given in marriage. Huh. This is exciting stuff, right? So what we're seeing here is that Tuba Shavat equals to the Lord, it equals praise, it equals a harvest celebration. Okay? But then we 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 can confirm this in some places, but you're going to see in others where we're still left scratching our head a bit. So let's go into uh, Luke chapter 12, and this is one that would show that we go that, that the bride goes at the beginning, right? Because it says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he'll return from the wedding. So it's him giving, uh, uh, giving a, a, a parable, you know, to be girded about and to be ready when your Lord will return from the wedding. Okay. So who is he talking about? He's talking to a group of people that we've already broken down that relates to the disciples in the Luke chapter 24 group. We, we, over, we know this. We've gone through it. We've showed the difference of the end of Luke in the resurrection story of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. That's why it says, and if it be the second watch or the third watch. The second watch is the end of seals with the mark and the 144. The third watch is the end of trumpets and the 12 tribes that will go out during the millennial reign. Okay, it's it's all connected here. Well, listen to what it says. When he returns from the wedding, of course, that you may open immediately. Blessed are those servants when he comes, finds watching, and he's going to sit down to eat with them and serve them. Make them to, then I will come to make them to sit down, <coughs> excuse me, to meet and will come forth and serve them so he's going to sit down and eat with them and serve them this is the luke 24 group of the disciple workers okay so it starts with when he returns from the wedding so as we've shown it, it would seem to be that there is this seven day leia typology gentile wedding the the old before the new that takes place first and this old is the wheat harvest it's the winter wheat that is harvested at the feast of weeks okay this is that leia representation and so where is this wedding going to take place in the 50-day count well tuba shavad is talking about giving in marriage so is this where it's going to begin then well really like on our side begin over here right at the full moon at the snow moon which is at a year's end and you see if the full moon starts 
on our side of the world, in mine anyways, right here at a, just before noon on the 5th of February, then I would think maybe it's even just slightly before, right around the new moon. So, you know, it's coming really from here to that end of that day over here. See, this is that period of time. However, you just saw how it lined up like that, right? How he just told them when he returns from the wedding for the disciple group who are the, who are the Luke 24 workers that represent the typology of the seals workers. They'll be with them for the 40 days and then they're going to work, remain and work during seals. Okay. This clearly appears to tell us the wedding will take place first and then he's going to come knock on the door and these guys are going to open to him. And we see this word, watch this. He will make them to sit down to meet, okay? And then you have this word. You're going to want to remember this. So it's a lean back word, but it's the G word 347, okay? It's not the special recline lean back, okay? This is just lean back. I want you to pay attention to it. 347, you're going to want to remember that. And we see that this wedding took place first. But now, when we go to this story that we've shared a number of times in starting in John chapter 20, because remember, the true story was that he met with Matthew's group first, met with Mark's group next, then he met with the apostles, which is the John group, and then he met with the Luke group of disciples. It was the story of the Feast of Weeks. It was the seven times seven meeting with Mark and with Matthew's group. And then he meets with the 50 day count that begins from John chapter 20's resurrection. And the, the evidence is everywhere. We understood it, as you guys know, from the revelation of the end of days helped bring the clarity of this. And we know it from 1 Corinthians 15. It says he met with this group, then this group, then this group. And then he met with Paul as one being born premature. Well, when you read that, <laughs> right? When you read that, let me show it real quick. We talked about it uh, not too long ago. When you read it, and I was like, oh, wait a second. There it is again, right? So on the, after, on the third day when he rose, what does it say? He met with the 12. That relates to the tribes. Then he met with above 500 at once. That represents the 144,000, the end of Mark. This is that one I was telling you that when he meets with the 12 at the end of Matthew's, um, this is the third watch, okay? So it goes Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke. So what did who did he meet with? The 12. And this typology, because in the end, it goes in reverse. But it goes, it goes apostles, it goes here, then it goes here, and then it goes here. The Matthew group is the third watch group. The 12 that represent the tribes going out during the millennial reign. This group represents the end of Mark's group as the 144,000 that go out during trumpets. Then it goes to the apostle group and the apostle group is John. John, this is the beginning of the 50 days. <laughs> so this was a representation of the seven and seven or the seven times seven Sabbaths. And then the 50 days begin. And the 50 days start with the apostles. And then he represents himself, Paul does, as, and last of all, he is seen as of me also as one born out of due time. What does that mean? Premature birth, right? No travail. Before she travailed, she brought forth. <clears throat> this represents the beginning of the 40 days. Well, that's kind of interesting, right? Because this would seem like the escape is after the wedding. You know, after the seven days, is everybody going to be here during the seven days? And then the eighth day, everybody goes. Then what about the wedding? You see, something deeper is, is to be understood in this. So when we go to the John portion first, as the beginning of the 50 days, <clears throat> it is possible that the wedding is first. And we've showed this wedding typology as Mary Magdalene 
the typology of his bride. Okay? And look at what it says. So the 50 days have started. Same day now at evening he comes. What does he do? He meets with 10 of the 11 apostles. Um, or with, yeah, with 10 of the 11, right? Because Judas is gone. Thomas wasn't there. He breathes the Holy Ghost on them. So when does this take place? Well, if we go to the book and we go into the seven churches, the apostles represent the new apostolic age beginning, and it's called the day of his of Israel's espousals. Now, the apostles, as we know, are going to remain during the time of seals, but their representation in this revelation of it all beginning is the seven to the eight days. While the wedding's taking place and all this stuff, these guys were anointed with the Holy Ghost by the Lord breathing on them to go and begin, to go and be fruitful, to go and, and prepare and to gather people to get into the ark in places of protection in this safety as seals begins. This is what's taking place. And during this eight days, as we know, we've talked about the stone's throw, which we found in Luke, which is represented within these eight days. And Ephesus worshiped the goddess Diana, who was created from a meteor that came and struck in Ephesus. And we know that there's a stone's throw coming during that week. And this week is called what? The day of Israel's espousals. So of course we can't help but think the wedding must be during this first week. <coughs> Excuse me. Because Smyrna represents the Luke group. This represents the John group. This represents the Luke 24 disciple group. They follow him for 40 days. They're putting their necks on the line. They get anointed by the Holy Ghost at the end of the 40 days and then at the 50th day. And they go out from Jerusalem and they're now the workers during seals and the apostles. They're, they're the foundation layers. They're the, the core, the, the main group. And these are really all the workers. And they remain during seals as well. But their main representation as Smyrna <coughs> is the 40 days. That's kind of this, this pocket of their representation, even though they both represent the time during seals. Because we know the apostles represent the laying of the foundation that happens in the fourth year of seals. So there's a physical, and of course, as we've talked about, there's a, a spiritual taking place as well. So it's the week of the espousals. It's the week when we know a meteor comes. And then we've got Smyrna, which is Luke's group that represents the 40 days. So as we, as we dig into this, and we see in John chapter 20, he breathes on them. Thomas missed it. And then he comes back after eight days again. So when he comes back on that eighth day, what we've been trying to discern is, did this start day one? And then this is the eighth day, right? That would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So sometime on the eighth day, he returns. What's the eighth day? After seven days on the eighth day. But now the question is, does it begin from right here? Or did it begin up here? Is this the beginning of the 50? So this would be one, two, right? So this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the eighth day. So if it started right here, this would be the after seven to the eighth day. But when we look at the typology in the was, the is, and the is to come, this represents those apostles of John chapter 20. This represents the seven days and him coming again after seven on the eighth day. And then the 40 days and the Luke disciples starting the 40 days on the eighth day. So what happens is after these eight or on this eighth day, what happens? <coughs> he meets with Thomas briefly and the apostles. Now, Thomas also has this anointing. And then what? Well, we follow what 1 Corinthians said. It went from the apostles and then it went to <clears throat> what um, what uh, Paul was represented as saying one born out of due time. 
he was representing the Luke 24 group, which had to do with the two on the road to Emmaus as the disciples. They had the representation of the disciples. But if you guys will remember Luke 24, verse 3, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. This is only given to us in all the resurrection stories, only in Luke, <clears throat> in Luke 24. It's the only place you see that his body, as if you would say his bride, is gone. When you read it like this, it seems that it's after seven on the eighth day. When, when we read it in 1 Corinthians, it seemed like that was after John's group. And then Paul, being one born out of due time, it is the representation of Luke's group. <clears throat> Excuse me, Luke's timing. So again, we see it here and we see it in 1 Corinthians. And then what does it say? And it came to pass as they were much perplexed. So now the world is going to be perplexed. And another word for perplexed, you guys all know this one. We shared it a number of times. It says the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. This is the pre-trib. And bewilderment of mind shall come upon all those who dwell on the earth. So now they're all going to be freaked out, which is bewilderment. And a word that equals bewilderment is perplexed. The body is gone. They were delivered from the earth, and the rest are perplexed. So here again, <coughs> we're seeing what, what appears to be another confirmation that <laughs> the group is taken out after the seven days to the eighth day. And, and, and to the eighth days when they're gone, right? That seven days, right? At the end of seven, and then the eighth day, they're there. But then we're still left scratching our head and saying, well, how does that how does that fit the wedding? How is there this wedding that takes place first? <clears throat> so let's go look at another case. In Song of Solomon, was it three or five I just had? Let's see. In Song of Solomon, chapter three, verse 11. Remember what we said about his espousals, right? His espousals equaled the one week represented by this apostolic time beginning and it was the time of israel's espousals and we get here in song of solomon 13 11, go forth ye daughters of zion and behold king solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him we showed you how this had a connection to the white horse rider right connected to the white horse rider is the son of man coming for 40 days and what does it say? Crowned him in the day of his espousals. And it's used one time. Wedding. Ta-da. Right? Marriage contract. It's wedding. And it's used one time. And the relation to it is the week before the 40. So you could see why, <coughs> excuse me, Man, I got something in my throat. You can see why there's this, this conundrum of trying to discern. Well, it, it would appear the bride has gone first. <clears throat> but if the bride is, is, really, um, is really this Enoch type and is connected to here, well, then we're going to need to spend a little bit more time trying to discern this within Enoch. Let's see what else we can find within Enoch. You know, does the wedding take place here and then the escape here? You know, <clears throat> then who's going to the wedding? Who's going to be there at the wedding? Who is the bride? If what's taking place is that they're actually being gathered and prepared and then taken on the eighth day. Let me show you this. Let's go to the Enoch story from the book of Jasher. <clears throat> this is really interesting because here we are, okay? I, I relate it to a typology even within this ministry. 
It could be typologies in many pastors and many churches and so forth, okay? But even within this ministry, <clears throat> look at the typology of what's taking place. Enoch's gone out, right? He's walking, he's walking. And what does it say? Let's start in verse 31. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day. And all the kings of the earth and their princes and the counselors remained with them that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge and gave them divine instruction. And he bare them uh, and, he, and he bade them serve the Lord and walk in his ways all the days of their lives. And he continued to make peace amongst them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon the horse. Interesting, right? And went forth, and all the sons of men went after him, about 800,000 men, and they <coughs> went with him a day's journey, one day. And on the second day, he said to them, return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. Then some of them went from him. Okay. Here we are coming to crunch time. We know it's the 70 years. We know how close it is. And they're going a day's journey. And what happens? Along the way, some people fall away. <clears throat> and I don't just mean in this ministry. I just mean in general. You know, and it doesn't mean because somebody left that they're not a part of the bride. That's not what I'm saying. But in this, you see, it's right up to the last day. We got to keep watching. You've got to keep diligent. You got to be repentant. Okay? That's what Paul said. If you continue in Christ. If. That's such a scary word, isn't it? If you continue in Christ. Okay? And what happens? Some of them went from him. And those that remained went with them six days journey. And Enoch said to them every day, return to your tents, lest some of you die. But they were not willing to return, and they went with them. And on the sixth day, uh, some of the men remained and clung to him, and they said to him, we will go with thee to the place where thou goest. As the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. We're going to follow you right to the end, Enoch. And they urged so much to go, and they urged so much to go with them that he ceased speaking to them, and they went after him and would not return. When the kings returned, they caused a census, okay, an enumeration to be taken in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day. Hello. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day, all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he ascended to heaven. And all the kings went to the place and they found the earth filled with snow. Okay, so what do we see? Uh, filled with snow and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to another, come, let us break through the snow and see perhaps the men that remained with Enoch are dead. So remember, there was a group that remained with Enoch. It wasn't only Enoch that was taken to heaven. It was those that remained with him. They searched through the snow and they found nothing because he was gone. What's the story that we see here? Seventh to the eighth day. Shoot. <laughs> what do we see in the seventh to the eighth day? But when Enoch went, it was the 365th year ending as year day ending. And it was snow on the ground like snow moon and snow on the ground and the lord said four months early and the harvest is ready but it's just told us 
that it was seven to the eighth day. Do you see now why I'm saying this possibility from the 30th? If it goes from 30, <laughs> right? This is day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the end of seven. And this is when Enoch was taken. And this is the eighth day when they then later in that eighth day are taking a census. They've gone up and now they're counting to see where they are or how many are left, what they could find. You know why that's interesting? Because if you guys know Luke in order, right? Luke 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the pre-trib, 40 days of the Son of Man, return at the end of seals, and return at the end of trumpets. That's Luke 1, 2, 3, 4 is the prophetic in it. Well, what do we get in Luke chapter 1? We get John being born, right? John is born. Okay? John is born. And then what do we have? We have the eighth day of his circumcision. So after seven to the eighth day, right, is that time of his circumcision. So when we see this, the question is, oh, <laughs> if this is the bride of Christ, well, you know, the, the shedding of the skin, right? The flesh will be gone. And it seems to line up with the, with the John into Luke and the body being gone after seven to that eighth day. Seems to be with, with uh, Noah to that seventh day and then checking this stuff out on the eighth day it seems to line up with with the ark story that we'll share again as well this skin is circumcised and then his father can cry out right his mouth is opened immediately and it says that the lord god of israel blessed be the lord god of israel for he hath visited and redeemed his people you see, and he hath raised the horn of salvation. I think I'm going to save that for another video. It's it's pretty wild. I'm building on something with that as well. So we're seeing again this possibility of after seven to the eighth day. Well, what happened after the seven to the eighth day with Enoch? They they took a census. So if we follow the story. And on the eighth day is when the time of the Son of Man comes. What does it start with? Luke chapter 2 starts with a decree. Okay? They're going to make a, a decree, an ordinance. And what is it? From Caesar Augustus that all the world. So what are they going to want to do? They're going to take a census. They're going to number. They're going to numerate the world to find out what? How many people vanished? Just like they did with Enoch. They're gonna find out how many vanished. <laughs> and as you know, it reminds us of that TV series, The Left Behind, right? Or The Leftovers, what was it called? The Leftovers, right? And they took a, they took a census, they found out how many people, and they said it was about 2% of the world, 144 million people, which was freaking me out because I had already understood it in another way. And there they were saying the same thing. Okay. They're going to make a decree and they're going to what? Tax, which is going to be to numerate. Okay. They're going to enroll. They're going to numerate. They're going to find out, engrave, describe the number of people who are left. And then what happens? The 40 days of the Son of Man. Jesus is born. So if it starts here, and this is the eighth day, it would seem that Enoch was taken here at the after seven to that, and then the eighth day. The eighth day, there's a numeration that takes place, and what happens? 40 days of the Son of Man begin. But you know what we saw? Enoch was taken. At the end, you know, this is actually day one, by the way, right? The, the 15th of Shabbat is 
day one. This is this is the 365 on the fifth, the fourth into the fifth. You see? And this is day one of it all beginning. The 40 days of the Son of Man, or it's the 50 days. But in either case, what we're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, is that it's Tuba Shavat. If the count starts up here, Enoch didn't go there. Enoch didn't go till the time of that, that seventh day or the, towards at the very end of that seventh day. And then it was the eighth day that these things were checked on. And we know it's the typology of the census, the taxing of a census, of enumerating, and the representation of the 40 days of the Son of Man beginning. But Enoch, if this is the count, it started to the seventh day. Enoch didn't leave till here. You see why we're still scratching our heads on these things? But the good news is, in either case, this is the time frame. This is the escape time. We, we've only really got a couple of passages that lead us to believe that the escape happens on day one. And that's the typology of the espousals, of course. It's the typology of uh, Mary Magdalene. Right? So <clears throat> if it does start here and the escape doesn't happen, then we would witness Israel being attacked in the north. We would witness the stones throw during this time. Because all of it is related, <clears throat> excuse me, to the escape in here. Whether Enoch at 365, who did not taste of death, and we're all praying to be like Enoch was. You see? It's, it's really, really interesting to, to dig into these things. You know, we followed that already with Acts, um, Luke 24. Let me just make sure. Yeah, with Luke 24, right? We followed this already, <clears throat> excuse me, from Luke 24 going into Acts. We see that the body is gone again, the perplexed. And then you've got the two on the road to Emmaus with the Lord. We see that he sits down to eat with them and the Lord serves them. <clears throat> You're going to see this. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. It's exciting. And then we see that um, uh, what happens, they sat down to meet. He opens unto them their understanding. Remember, he opens unto them their understanding. Do you know that this word for understanding, it's used 26 times. But do you know <clears throat> that that word for understanding is only used once in the Gospels? Where is it? Where is it? I think I've got it here somewhere. Let me see what number is that. 4920. Let me see if I did save it. Let me see. 4920. No, let me just use this one. Watch this. <laughs> you can see the horn study, see? You can see a little bit of that horn study taking place there. But watch this. Whoops. Uh, Greek 49.20. Watch this. Where was it? Where was it? Oh, I must be thinking about something else. Oh, that's what it was. So in relation to the understanding, you see... In Mark and in Matthew, you see nothing about the conversation about the worker group. Remember? We're talking about this worker group from Luke 24. The ones that follow him for 40 days and then go on through seals. Okay? You don't see them. This understanding wasn't open to those at the end of Matthew. The understanding wasn't opened to them. Sorry, I got something on my... Laptop. There we go. Um, 
you you see that there was nothing in relation to Mark's group. The only place you see it in relation to a worker group is the Luke group in Luke chapter 24 when he opens their understanding. And what's what's really interesting about it, this is why I'm bringing it up, is you're going to find this connection to this understanding is also the one in Revelation chapter 13, which is tied into um, the mark of the beast. This one right here. This one in this connection to understanding. There we go. Let me let me follow that. Let's see what this says. You see, I went a little bit off topic because I wasn't sure if I was going to share this part. And so I never kept it. And now I'm scrambling to find it. There you go. This is what I was talking about. This is the one I was looking for. See that? Luke 24, 45. Not, it wasn't, I had this wrong word that they might understand. That's not the word I wanted. Then opened he their understanding. Luke, worker group, disciple group, is the only group to which he opens their understanding in the end of days. This is the seals workers, the disciples that follow him. This is the group, some of them will be killed. This is the group that will be resurrected to rule and reign with him. This is the one that has their understanding opened. And look at this. It's the same understanding as the one from Revelation 13. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. So who do you think is going to be the group who will understand who the beast is when the end of days begins? You got it, brothers and sisters. If you're part of that worker group, that disciple worker group of seals, that Smyrna group during seals, when he opens the understanding of these things fully that we've been growing in, you will know the understanding of the mark of the beast. That's pretty wild, right? I had to share that one. All right, Acts 1 into Acts 2. Um, I don't know that I really needed to go into Acts 1 and Acts 2. You know, we followed that, right? Again, we see that it's the 40 days coming to an end. Then he tells them not many days hence. Okay, again, this is that worker group. And they receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost. This is how we know. It's seven times seven Sabbaths and then count 50 days. This is that 50 days. And of course, we know they're going to receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. All right. On day 50. Now let's go into Genesis 7 to show this connection again. I just want to line these things up and I'm preparing for what I'm going to show you. But I really, you know, whether new people or people that have been around for a little bit, I want you to be able to see these things and understand there is a 50 days that comes first and we've got an understanding of it okay here we have yet seven days okay so what is this it's the beginning of the 50 yet seven days and then it has where is it after seven days this is the same story again as john into luke it's the same story as 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 uh, 1 Corinthians 15. It's the same story of 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 2 Esdras when he delivers and then their be bewilderment. This it even seems to be the same as Enoch that it was 7 and then to the 8th day because after 7 they were all in the ark and then at the 8th day the door was shut. And then the 40 days began. And if that is the case, then I would have to submit that the 50 days would begin on January 30th. Actually, 29th to the 30th on our end of the world. <laughs> that starts getting nail biting. Even more nail biting than a 10 day count. We might be preparing to see for see something take place here. 
Enoch had it. More than half, three quarters of the stories have a seven to the eighth day first. And if this is when they're brought to the Lord, because everything, this is the praise and celebration for the harvest. You see? So again, we even see it in the story of the ark. Yet seven days, then after seven days. What happens after seven days? The ark door was shut, the Lord shut them in, and the 40 days begin. When the 40 days begin, of course, you guys all know it. You go to uh, Genesis 8, and the 40 days ended, and what happened? The raven goes out first. You see? The raven goes out first. Now, let's see what happens in this count, okay? If this was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. This kind of seems odd, right? We're short. We're short if this is if this is day 50. You know, could it be, you know, based on the count, maybe you could say to here? Well, this kind of gets interesting now. Because remember what I was telling you in the beginning about the phases of the moon? Check this out. This is March 2023. They've already tracked it. They already know it. Check this out. There's new moon. New moon they have as March 21st. As March 21st, they have new moon. What did the count equal? Right? What did the count bring us to? right here so if this is new moon let's see what it told us for a time let's see i don't know if it goes to where i am if i can understand where it is i'm not sure what time of day anyways so we could see that new moon is the 21st so new moon is is new moon officially the beginning of the month well generally it is remember because nissan one is usually where it is usually it's nissan one is the dark moon or they're saying the dark moon is the 21st now that i don't know if it means it's on this side or if it's early in the morning then to israel it would actually be on this side hello right let me check something. There we go. I went and looked it up. So March 21st. So in Jerusalem, in Israel, 2023, March 21st at 7.23 p.m. There you go. So 7.23. I got a lot of stuff open. So 7.23 p.m. on the 21st. So this is where they have it right here. The calendar has it right here. Okay. So it starts right here. Well, that count brought us to the 20th. So if the new moon is the beginning of the month, just like they have for Nissan 1, then this would be the year's end. Wow. <laughs> Maybe we're kind of answering our own question here, right? Maybe we're answering our own question. Because this is the beginning of the year. This is the end of the year. Huh. <laughs> See, learn as we go. And why there's another reason this is interesting too, because our brother Ivan from South Africa, he believes that at least somewhere in this range, it may be around the 28th to the 30th, I think it was, that he believes is the true uh, birth date from his research of John the Baptist. Well, <laughs> it just may be. But if it is what i'm trying to get across what this is probably then telling us 
is that the bride doesn't go that or that the the escape the pre-trib escape doesn't happen until the end of seven days the seventh and then the eighth day the ark is shut and the 40 days of the son of man begin on the eighth day hello let's see what happens if we count this as day one okay let's have a look at that and see how it works out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. What the? I'm sorry, I got to count that again. <laughs> I got to count that again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Well, how about that? I don't know what I was counting before. <laughs> uh, and more than that, we just saw that the new moon is right here. Not right here. Wow. So I'm just pausing on that for a moment, guys. Doesn't change the escape date. In this time, again, depending what side of the world you're on. This is escape day. And if it's escape day, all this is telling us day one is here. Hmm. <laughs> well, after all of this, you know, we've been going back and forth on this and seeing all these differences. Wow. Sorry, I'm just sorting stuff out of my head here. I gotta tell you, that really makes it interesting. Makes it very, very interesting. If that's the case, in about the next what? One, two, in the next 48 or so plus hours, we may very well witness the very things we've been talking about. You see, if I went back even from here and just went one, two, three, right? Because the 40 days of the Son of Man would end you see, you could say, well, is this the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man? And then that leaves three days, right? So he leaves and then the Antichrist shows up and it's three days before the destruction. But that's not even the beginning of the year. That's Nissan 1. Or if you went, this was the second and this would be Nissan 1. But this is, this is definitely past. Well, well, well. <laughs> I gotta I I I don't know what I was counting before when making that connection. You see? Because when we when we've understood this, what do we know now? What have we been able to see and understand and we've known for a long time? Seven days to the eighth, on the eighth, starts the 40. When the 40's done, there's the 30. Uh, sorry, there's the three, and it starts with the raven going out. When the raven goes out, the attack doesn't happen instantly. It starts with a compassing about. And the attack doesn't happen till after the dove anoints those disciples that are in that upper room with the Pentecost Holy Ghost anointing takes place. Then they go out from Jerusalem and Jerusalem is attacked after the compassing about 
when the raven spirit enters the Arab, which is dusky hue, which means the color of the skin, which is Arab from the texture of their skin, okay? The, the covering, the color of their skin. The raven is an Arab. This represents Syria and Assad that surrounds and attacks. See that? So again, <laughs> thinking live here, guys, thinking live. So, you know, it, the, the one thing that this could be leading to is it doesn't mean that the, that, that the bride isn't taken here and something else is related to this Enoch group here. You see what I'm saying? Because we clearly have scripture that shows the wedding taking place at the beginning and being seven days. And then we've got clearly another portion of things going on here. You see? But as the Enoch in the escape group, it's got to be connected to here. Not having tasted of death. You see what I'm getting at with it? So now let's look at Luke 19. Let's go into Luke 19. And we're going to cover a couple things in Luke 19. You see, because in Luke 19, when we see Jesus comes, well, first of all, we have the triumphal entry. What did I explain in the intro videos? There's the video where the resurrection, the triumphal entry, and the Mount Transfiguration are all typologies of the Lord coming to begin his 40 days. So you have the tri triumphal entry, and look what you have. His two disciples, they're the same two as the Luke 24 typology. And what do we see happens? He's now come near to Jerusalem. He weeps over it, tells them that it's now going to be hid from their eyes, right, for these next seven years when they're going to be removed. Because what? For the days are coming upon you that your enemies are going to cast a trench about thee. They're going to compass you about. They're going to keep you in on every side, and they're going to lay you even with the ground because you knew not the time of your visitation. You see? When's the time of the visitation? The start of the 40 days. You see? What was it in Luke chapter 1? In Luke chapter 1, which is at the eighth day of the circumcision, the flesh being cut away, then John's dad is able to speak, right? And he says that, that he had visited and redeemed his people. And there it is, the time of his visitation at the beginning of the 40 days. But you see, what is he warning about during the 40 days? He's warning that they're going to be surrounded and then attacked. They're not attacked during his 40 days. They're attacked after 50 days on day one of the new year. Because the anointing of the Holy Ghost has to take place on day 50. But as the raven goes out first, before the dove, the raven enters Assad, and that is when the, the word will go out and they will start compassing Jerusalem. Remember the decree, the apple splitting before 70 is done? That's what's going to happen. There's going to be a decree made. And when this decree is made to allow them to build and to divide the land and so forth, it's going to happen during this period of time, during this 50 days, before the new year starts. At the new year, if this is really the new year, because this is the dark moon, the new moon, then this is the 50th, as we just counted. And at the 50th, the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes. The Holy Ghost leaves. And at day one, Assad and those will finally attack. Right? But they start with what? With a one, two, three days of surrounding. Which means the 40 days of the Son of Man end. They would end at March on March 17th. Because remember, what he's doing the whole time is he's warning that they're going to be surrounded and then destroyed. So they're surrounded, but they're not destroyed yet, right? We see this even in Luke 21. 
In fact, we see it in a number of places. We even saw it in Isaiah 9 again, where the first attack happens in the north, then the Son of Man shows up, and he's telling them they're going to be compassed about, right? That they're going to be attacked by, by Syria. And that's what happens even in Luke 21, as you guys all know. Jerusalem shall be compassed about with armies. Then you'll know that the desolation is nigh. It's near. Everybody flee and get out. And then they're going to be destroyed. This destruction is the beginning of vengeance of all things that are written might be fulfilled. He's saying now this is the beginning of the 14 years of tribulation at the compassing about and then the destruction. The destruction doesn't happen while the Son of Man is here. He warns of it happening. He's got to go back up to heaven and the Lamb is going to then open, uh, is going to break the, the second seal, the red horse rider. And the raven is going to go out and the compassing is going to take place. All right? We've been able to show that. We've gone through it a number of times, right? Well, now, let's go in. <clears throat> Actually, before we get to that, We'll, we'll show it in a couple other places real quick, just for new people's sake. <clears throat> in Luke 17, in verse 24, he says, a lightning from one end to the other. He's talking about the end of Matthew when he returns feet down. But what does he say? But first, this is Luke 24, same thing, but first. He's going to suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. It'll be as it was in the days of Noah. They drank, they ate, and married, and given a marriage, and what? until the day they entered the ark when is the ark entered <clears throat> when the lord shut the door and locked it you see this is another one we've talked about a number of times when he comes to begin his 40 days it says they were still eating and drinking and marrying and given in marriage until this day well what day is it in the story of the ark there was yet seven days and after seven days after seven days, is the eighth day, they were in the ark and now the, lark, the door was shut. So if the escape happens um, at the beginning of the 50, then why would they still be marrying and given in marriage and eating and drinking and doing all those things when 144 million people, almost 2% of the earth has vanished? Sounds a little bit too chaotic, doesn't it? Doesn't make sense. So we got another clue showing us that it's after the seven to the eight days when the actual escape takes place. But is there something else going on with the bride? And I think that's something we don't quite have the clarity for yet. Okay? Because there, there, there's still something going on. <clears throat> Maybe not everybody is going to the wedding. Oh, what about that? Just dawned on me. Maybe not everybody in, maybe the pre-trib isn't everybody going to the wedding. You see what I'm saying? Maybe there's a wedding and there's a select group that goes first. And then the pre-trib takes place. I'm just throwing it out there. Because again, <laughs> we're seeing these other places where the wedding takes place first. So it can't be that all of the pre-trib group is gone on day one because we have too many other pieces of scripture telling us the opposite so we know that when he's talking about this <clears throat> that he's going to be as um as noah in these 40 days we know the other one when you understand who the gospels are speaking to we know that when jesus says he's going to be as jonah was jonah was the warning jonah was the 40 day sign to them so he's going to be as jonah was you see, so we've got all of these connections everywhere. We know he is going to be here for those 40 days that will begin after seven to that on that eighth day. All right. Well, now we're going to touch a little bit on this again to build into this next point. And that is that we see this story of the 10 minas. We talked about it uh, not too long ago, right? So that a certain nobleman has gone to a far country to receive a kingdom, to receive for himself a kingdom. Again, it's another parable from the Lord talking about him being gone to receive his kingdom. And he gives his servants 10 pounds, right? We've gone through this and we know that this typology 
is again what? It, it's like the wedding story. That it would appear that he's giving this money in this typology, the end time understanding, that he's giving it to his apostles. I mean, yeah, his apostles, his John group. He's giving it to his 10 servants, the John group, those disciples that he breathed on. And while he was gone, while he left for those seven and then came back again after eight days, there he was having already breathed on the 10. And then Thomas shows up. You see, so we have this typology that during that one week, he's giving uh, 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 work. He's, he's making or or giving them this money and this typology is what they're going to go do with it. They need to show the fruits of their labors when he returns to begin his 40 days. And he's done it here with the disciple, with the apostles. And when he comes back, you know, the, the one that didn't, and what are they going to get? We know that they're going to be given over to rain, right? And those in Miami who give it to rain, da, 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 10 pounds. We know that he gives them more and that they're going to be reigning over what? Here it is right here. Have thou authority over 10 cities. Okay. Have thou authority over five cities. This is talking to the apostles. Okay. This is that typology, that authority that's being given for what? Well, they were doing something during that week. So if there is a wedding and these apostles are remaining, they're doing something during this week because they were given the anointing of the Holy Ghost by Christ. And how do we know this relates to the one week during the, the, the first seven to the eight days of the 50 day count? Because look at this. Then it's followed up by the triumphal entry. What did the triumphal entry represent? Of course, it represents the beginning of the 40 days of the Son of Man. And him, only this found in Luke, not in the other Gospels, that he came near and he weeps over them because they're going to be surrounded and compassed about. So if this is the beginning of the 40, and this comes before it, and we know that John and the Apostle group is the part that comes first, and he's going to receive his kingdom... And while he's gone, he's giving them this authority to go out and be fruitful and to multiply these things. You see? And this is the story of what? This is the story of the money, right? The, the 10 pounds in the story of Luke. Well, you all know when we talked about this in the past, you have a similar story in Matthew 25. Now, why does it matter? Because we know there's a pre-trib bride and there's a post-trib bride. There's a Gentile bride and there's this Jewish bride. Right? So we know this story. We know there's the Leah and the Rachel type. Okay? So we know that this wedding is the one that takes place at the end of tribulation. At the end of the 14 years. We've taught this so many times in the past that the gospel of Matthew has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us whatsoever. And his, par uh, his uh, discourse has even less to do with us. When you follow the discourse of Matthew 24, it continues into Matthew 25. M Matthew's discourse is to the end of the 13th year. The 14th year is Matthew's discourse. So Matthew's discourse, they're removed from the land. Then you have their six years of trumpets. And then you have what? The 14th year. The Lord has returned. He's going to make things right. It's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. Not this pre-trib 40 days representation. This is the one year as it was in the days of Noah played out by about a year. Okay? That's why you see it at the end of Matthew's discourse. What does he have to do? He has to prepare a place for his bride, right? When that year's done, then he's coming for his bride how does matthew 25 start it's the end of the 14 years that final year has been fulfilled to prepare a place for her and what happens everybody thinks the foolish and wise virgins has to do with the bride the pre-trib it has nothing it's the post-trib bride and 
you see the bridesmaids it's like 50 of them are ready right half is ready five are ready five aren't ready it has zero nothing to do with anything we talk about in the pre-trip it's all post-trip and what do we see in this story here's where he's returned they see him ready but the bridegrooms weren't the bridegrooms um the bridesmaids weren't all ready the bridegroom comes when does that mean he's coming the end of the 14th year is complete the father sounds the shofar and he goes and there they were half ready of the wise they're not the bride they're the bridesmaids okay the post trip by bridesmaids and what happens now he's going into the marriage and the door shut how long is the marriage seven days as well correct so the wedding is now seven days and the wedding ceremony and everything is seven days and look what happens we now have a parable of the kingdom of heaven and it's about what money money he's now giving talents to a group of people during what the one week wedding during the one week wedding he is giving them talents to go do and what they were supposed to do and to the unprofitable what happens they're cast out to weeping and gnashing of teeth why because it's all over and then it's the final judgment the 14 years is over there's this one week wedding and during this one week wedding who's this group who's being given these talents the 12 tribes remember the last one was the 12 tribes there to go out during the millennial reign well what's happening is the lord seeing how they're going to multiply during that one week taking place of the wedding so if we got one at the end and we see its placement being during the wedding week <coughs> and then comes the end what do you think is going on during the reference in luke's because you don't find this in mark what do you think the reference is to the 10 minas being given which represent a week while he's gone to rep to, to receive his kingdom and then when he returns it's what the typology of his triumphal entry after the one week wedding that starts his 40 days <laughs> but it brings us back doesn't it it brings us back to say what the heck is there a wedding during this week or isn't there it appears that there is a wedding during the first week but it doesn't appear as though everybody in the quote unquote pre-trib is going to this wedding i don't know how to explain it but we have evidence everywhere that that there's a wedding for the one week first but we have evidence in more places everywhere that the pre-trib doesn't happen till Enoch, those who won't taste of death and all the rest doesn't happen until the new year of trees. <laughs> it's a head scratcher, right? Because if this is the beginning of the 50, well, then it's kind of out of place that it's going so far into Nissan. You see but then what did enoch show us there was seven days and he was taken and those that were with him and then the eighth day they went and did a census to see and then it started what it's like the 40 days then of the son of man luke in order chapter one to chapter two but there's clearly something that takes place at the beginning of the 50 in relation to a wedding <clears throat> it's just awesome all of it brothers and sisters all of it is connected to this period of time right here starting two days from now it's just it, it's so so incredible and then you remember so now the 50 days the the one week wedding the the escape of everybody the 40 days of the son of man beginning his 40 days ending here, leaving three days, which means at this point right here, one, 
two, <coughs> excuse me, three. That, and it might even be that it goes like one, two, three, right, full days. Then the attack would happen, okay? Or the attack happens, see, like in this period right here. And this attack is the attack that the compassing about has taken place. Actually, the Lord ends here. Okay, so one, two, three, in, in this range. And then Syria attacks. And what do we know this is? Well, this is the beginning of the year, which means, again, the attack is somewhere towards the very end right here. And how do we know this? Again, we <clears throat> we showed Syria in Isaiah 9. But um, if you'll remember the other place, I've mentioned it many times. I'll show it again real quick. I even spoke about it earlier. In 2 Chronicles. See, it's interesting, too, that it starts with uh, Joash was seven years old when he began to reign and reigned 40 years. So see, it's like 70 year, or seven years coming to an end, and there was 40 days. Because... When this seven, when this 70 is complete, do you know what it also is? It's the literal end of these first seven years. What we call, quote unquote, easy years, the preparing of the bride, the preparing of this group. Of which the 50 days is a part of in the last piece of the seven. So when the 70, when those first seven years are over, right? And what do we see? And it came to pass at the end of the year <clears throat> that the host of Syria came up against them, and they came to uh, they came to Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed them. See, so they're coming to them, they're compassing the boat at the end of the year, and then they bring about this destruction. See, and all the princes of the people from among the people, and sent all the spoil unto the king of Damascus. And the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men, okay? With a small company. This is why Jerusalem and, and the Jews are always like, they're not going to defeat us. We're too powerful. But because of their disobedience, see? And the Lord delivered a very great loss in the into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Okay? We all know this has to do with disobedience for the house of Judah. Okay? Syria is going to be victorious this time. But in the end... They're going to try it again, and they're going to be destroyed by the Jews at the end. All right? <clears throat> so we've discovered this. We've talked about this. And what do we see? Again, at the end of the year. So another year's end. So we had a year's end that had to be connected to Enoch. A year's end that he had to be connected to the new year of trees. <clears throat> right? And we knew that there had to be a year's end that was connected to the attack of Syria. And that's exactly what we have. It 50 could start here, but the year's end to the pre-trib of everybody going is connected to here. But the year's end to the attack is connected to this time frame right here. It's everywhere over and over and over again. It's just awesome. Let's continue building on this and add some new spice into the mixture all right now again many of you guys remember this right we've talked about it a lot right off the bat in luke 9 27 but i tell you the truth there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of god huh interesting right because isn't that exactly what we were just talking about with Enoch? And Enoch, what? At the seventh day, towards the end of the seventh day, and then the eighth day, there's a sense this is like the 40 days of the Son of Man starting. And what does it say? Shall not taste of death. And then what do we see in the transfiguration? Remember I said transfiguration was one of the typologies of pre-mid post. Luke's is the pre of, as the 40 days of the Son of Man starting. And what do you see? And it came to pass about an eight days after these things. Hello. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. But what has this conversation been about? That it appears there's still a wedding that takes place first. Before that seventh to the eighth day and nobody will, that group won't taste of death. 
there still appears to be a wedding taking place first. Let's look into it. Let's go back up. Remember this? It's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. This is the new thing I discovered and that I shared a little bit of in the live show. So it starts in Luke 9, 14. Again, we talked about company before. And why was company important? Because this one word for company, see? A party at a meal. This is a special group of people. And how do we know they're a special group of people? Because it's directly connected to the wedding feast. Oh my God, here we are again. There's a wedding that takes place first. But it appears not everybody's going. At least not till the seventh to the eighth day. Listen to what it says. <clears throat> verse uh, 14, verse 7. And, da, 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 da. and he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked out how they choose the chiefest room, saying unto them, when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest or unless a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him, and he that bade thee and him Come and say to thee, give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room. Okay? Go sit in the lowest room. And if the friend comes and tells you to come higher, then you're going to have honor in that. See? You're going to have a greater honor in going at that and moving up to the highest room. Don't go sit in the highest room. We've talked about it many times, right? So. Uh, that he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher, then thou shalt have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat. Again, you're going to now have, uh, uh, um, you're going to have worship in the presence of them that are sitting down at the meal. So we're seeing a group sitting at the meal at the wedding feast. So we've always said, don't go sit down in the highest room. What does the highest room mean? Reclining first, the preeminence at meals. The root word for this preeminence at meals is used one time, and it's this group that's going to get the preeminence at meals, which is only found in all the Gospels, in all the New Testament, one time, one time, and you guessed it, it's this group in Luke, this company that gets to sit down. Pretty wild, right? This was such an awesome discovery. Well, what is it telling us? There's a wedding first. Because then what? Then it goes to the eighth day after. You see? So there is a group going to a wedding. But then there's this, this larger portion that, that's part of the pre-trib that goes after the wedding. There definitely seems to be clarity coming into this. You'll even see this difference. Remember I told you about that word, uh, sit down? Let me see if I can uh, find it. I don't think it's too far back. I think just around the corner. Perplexed, lean back. See that? So remember when I showed that one place, it was eight times it's used and it means lean back and it's 347? Well, that sit down here is 2625. To recline, look at that. To take place at a table. Look at this. Make sit down to meet. To sit down and eat at the table. What was the story at the wedding? The story at the wedding was those who got called up and those that got to sit in the upper room would be with those at the table who get to recline at that special section in the upper room during the wedding feast. So this group right here 
is a special group that gets to recline in that upper room seating and they're the ones that get to sit down at meet at that table and recline what this is awesome this is awesome awesome stuff because we're discovering there's more words in there right well let's go look at this because you see this word for sit down first of all this company is only used one time this word for sit down is used three times i'm going to show you where these three times are watch this the three times this is used are all in luke they are all in luke every one of them and we know each of them in detail this one we've already covered okay sit down and meet you see that one well let me show you something remember we were just in luke 14 talking about the wedding well what did it say about this wedding feast not the banquet the wedding what did it say about the upper room uh luke 14 verse 8 when thou were bidden of any man to a wedding sit not down look at that there it is don't sit down in the highest room and that was the root word right so what do we find those who get to sit down he's saying when you first go don't go sit down in the upper room but if you're to be bid up to the upper room and he comes and says to you friend go up higher then thou shall have worship in the presence of them that sit and meet that what sit down at meet so if you're called up to the higher room then you will be the one who gets to sit down at meet in the what in the reclining right in not that one in this one and it just so happens that the two words from luke chapter 9 that are before the eight days that are in relation to the wedding feast and those that get to sit in the honorable places in the upper room to eat at the table are before the eight days it's pretty awesome i'm going to show you where the other one is but i'm going to go show you something else first what does mark relate to if you guys remember this oh you guys will all know this in second corinthians chapter 12 the first group above 14 years they're going to the third heaven right we're talking about the wedding the first week but we know that at the end of that week there's going to be a larger group the majority right and they're going to be part of the third heaven as well but then what we know the great multitude rapture is the was caught up and they go to paradise what is paradise it's the garden right paradise is eden it's the garden of eden the garden well look what happens when we go to the same story in mark the same story in mark and look at what we see at the feeding of the five thousand. how fitting death of john the baptist you see the death of john the baptist is in mark chapter six before the mark group and the equivalent of their rapture time isn't that amazing because what do we know about the john the baptist story he's the one that's killed at towards the end of seals right he brought back family and you know fathers and sons and all that stuff and brought them back which is directly related to the end of seals and now he's killed and then you have what you have the story of the feeding of the five thousand and look what happens in the story of the feeding of the five thousand uh to give to eat a penny worth right a daenerys 10 asses of bread right because this is related to tribulation right <clears throat> because it was going to be a difficult time during tribulation but watch this in verse 39 and 40 and he commanded them <clears throat> to sit down by companies remember the sit down <clears throat> the sit down in mark is not the same one as luke remember the one in luke is used three times and it's only used in luke their sit down <clears throat> is not the same sit down as mark's 
they don't have the same rank they don't have the same place and how do we know look at the word for companies <clears throat> a drinking party a room of guests the word is used two times but it's kind of it's kind of like a mistake if you will because the two words are right here it's the same word but for some reason they've given it two definitions of the same word <laughs> i don't get it but you see this companies is only used in mark in the story for mark and it's not about a wedding it's not about a wedding it's about a drinking party and a guest room isn't that interesting well it gets even better because it says that they're going to sit upon well what did the first group get to sit on they got to sit on chairs reclining in chairs at the table to sit down and eat this group is drinking not eating i'll bet you i'm gonna i'm gonna do more digging into this but i'll bet you the difference of the luke one into the mark one outside of what we're talking about here is probably also going to relate to the uh last supper i'll bet you you're going to find more insight into the last supper from mark and and uh luke's in relation to the wording that he says he's not going to do something after having it done with them whether it's eat whether it's drink with them again i'll bet you you'll find the same story so in luke it's all about sitting at the table in the upper room getting the reclining seats and and being at that special table okay this one here it's not about eating it's about drinking a drinking party and it's a room of guests and they don't get to sit at a table at like a, as a guest of honor they're going to sit on the green grass where are they going to sit in the court or garden they're going to be sitting in the garden of course they're going to be sitting in the garden where does the rapture group go they're going to paradise they go to paradise they're going to heavenly mount zion they're going to remember they're going to see it coming at the end of the sixth seal and the world's going to be freaking out and saying what and anybody who calls on the name of the lord will be saved and can go up at that time in fact in luke in order you see this this is the typology of that of that seventh year of seals when the rapture is going to take place see john the baptist was there he prepared the way uh and all flesh shall see the salvation of god and you even see and it said in the multitude that came to be baptized of him O generation of vipers who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come you see there's there's going to be a group of vipers this group that they they realize what's going on and they go ah, i'm calling on the name of the lord i'm calling on the name of the lord this is what's happening let's go back in mark 6 so we know everywhere we've talked about this we know that theirs is the garden and what is it it's like the court of the temple so you have the inner which is where the pre-trib group, group group goes you have the the court and then you've got the rest right the outer it's the pre mid post and what do you see they get to sit on green grass i mean what is found in this one verse is just awesome it is so awesome and it says and they sat down in ranks again this word is only used twice but for some reason they're both right here and what does it say and they sat down in ranks which means a garden plot come on it's perfect and we know it we know it's exactly what it should be what does this relate to of course the differences in the gospels what do we know about zachariah right we know their 70th year and so forth and this is the end of seals the end of seven years then trumpets begins so when the lord is seen and he's there for that seventh year and all flesh will see and and people are crying on the name of the lord to be saved then what happens then the rebuilding and everything takes place right so the lord is now established on mount zion and what do we see thus saith the lord of hosts i was jealous for zion with great jealousy 
I was jealous for her with a great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, his holy mountain. It's awesome. We know this. Theirs is paradise. Theirs is the garden. Totally, totally makes sense why they will not be taking place in the at the table, right? They weren't at the wedding. Mark's group has nothing about the wedding. Well, now let's go back to the Luke group as we bring this to a close. You see, we saw that the Luke group in chapter 9 and in chapter 14, both of these words, <coughs> excuse me, where was it? Both of these words were the words connected from that wedding feast, being invited to a wedding and being at that banquet, uh, at that wedding uh, banquet. And this is directly related. And of course, it's right before this group not seeing, most of them not seeing death or some not tasting of death till they had seen the kingdom of God. This is that conversation of Enoch. And then there's the eighth day. Bang, we know that story. We've just covered it all. Well, what do we know about this portion of time? Well, we've been talking about it being related to Luke chapter 24 and the disciple workers, right? We, we've seen it everywhere. So when we go into Luke 24, <coughs> we've clearly been showing here throughout this video, as we have with others, that this group represented on the two on the road to Emmaus are clearly those disciple workers. They are clearly the ones that followed him for 40. They are clearly the Smyrna type. They are the seals workers that put their necks on the line. We've seen it and we've understood it. But there's something very, very interesting that takes place here. Because we call this group of Smyrna, this seals group of workers with the Lord for 40 days, and then who remain during seals. This is the group that puts their neck on the line. This is the group that are gonna be resurrected at the end of tribulation when the Lord returns. And they're gonna be resurrected and they're gonna rule and reign with him for a thousand years, right? We That's the same group, it's a Smyrna group. So they're obviously a special group to the Lord. They're obviously a special group that have been watching and praying and seeking the Lord. That when he comes, they're ready and they're prepared. And the question has been in all of this, and it has been for a while, is, is this group that is going to be here with the Lord and working with them, is it possible that they're also a part of the wedding? Will they somehow be translated or will it be in spirit because obviously you can't go to the third heaven and still have this garbage body you see so is something special going to happen to this group will will it be that they get a, a a glorified body to go to the wedding and then return you see when we were looking at this at luke chapter 12 he says as your lord when he returns from the wedding and it was the luke 24 group so you're left scratching your head and say, well, it seems like they're staying. You see, it seems like they're staying. But one thing we know is that the apostles are working during that time. So the, the disciple workers that will then be with them for 40 days and then during seals, it seems like they were told to wait. But is there is there hints that something special is also going to be taking place with them? Because they're called like the remnant bride. They're, they're a group that remains, that's a special group for them, that have a place reserved in heaven. They were watching, they were praying, they were diligent, they were seeking. So is there maybe hints that they will get to go to the wedding? And this was pretty wild. Because in everything we read about them up to today, it seems as if, they remain. But remember what happens. 
if they have a glorified body you see when the lord came back here he had a glorified body right so is it possible that these guys come back and they're going to be given a glorified body all right a glorified body to go and then when they come back well are they going to be given the old rags again or are they going to keep their glorified body nobody would know it to look at them but you got to remember they're going to be the ones shining the light throughout the earth now so maybe they do receive glorified bodies i know there are some people in the ministry that believe and from what they've from what they've been shown through the lord that this group does receive glorified bodies but at the same time we've got to remember we know that some of them are going to die so i guess it means just because you have a glorified body doesn't mean you can't die but we know in luke 13 it says that not a hair on your head will perish right not a hair of your head will be hurt so you got to remember we're talking about the end of days and in the end of days we're talking about supernatural like nothing ever before that man has ever witnessed on the earth taking place even greater than when christ was here and the things that he did you see so maybe there is a possibility because i'm about to show you that these two places that were directly related to a group that got to sit down in the upper room in these companies of 50 that there's a third place that was used that was also in luke and the connection is to this smyrna group and this smyrna group is represented as these 20 uh, luke 24 disciples and do you know where it's found <clears throat> in luke 24 verse 30. What is Luke 24, verse 30? Luke 24, verse 30 is when the Lord has returned, is when the Lord has returned and started his 40 days. Okay? This is somewhere on the eighth day still. And listen to what it says. And it came to pass as he sat at meat. What were all three of them? All three of them were about sitting and eating during the way. Uh, the, the other two were in relation to sitting and eating at the wedding at the table of honor in the upper room. And it says, and it came to pass as he, Jesus, sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight and they said one to another did not our heart burn within us uh within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures and as we know, it leads us to him telling them and him returning. So he vanished, but then he comes back later that day. And what does it say? And he opened unto them their understanding, which is only the Luke group, which is directly related to the seals workers and who will have understanding of the mark of the beast. This is that group right here when the Lord sits at meet with them. Now, if two out of the three of these are related to the wedding that takes place at the beginning of the 50 for the one week first, is it possible that this Smyrna group of workers is that group taken to the wedding in the upper room to recline at meat at the table with the Lord? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? They would return with glorified bodies and guess what they would be willing to do? You would be willing to do anything because you now know the truth of everything. You will have been in the presence of the Lord, sitting at the table, eating with them. 
He'll you return and he's going to open to you your understanding that you'll understand the mark and you'll understand all the scriptures and everything related to the end of days. Nobody, as John, first John talks about, nobody will need to teach you anymore because now you will know you'll have been in his presence. Hello. You see, it won't be a scary thing to be a seals worker, to be a Smyrna group having to put possibly your neck on the line. It doesn't mean you walk around willingly putting your neck on the line. <clears throat> your job is to wake people up, is to bring them to the Lord. You're the place people are going to come to. And there are going to be places of refuge and protection with some of these people there. You're going to be teaching them. Teaching them the ways and preparing them and giving them understanding as to what's taking place next. And to be ready and watching for what's about to come. You're going to be involved in the greatest revival in human history with the apostles. And you're going to sit and eat at the table with the Lord. The only thing is the timing of this one. This timing is clearly at the start of the 40 days. Whereas the other two are at the beginning of the 50, not after the week. This is after the week to the eighth day. But my, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm curious if this is a hint that they're going to be part of it. Or is him doing this with them at the start of the 40 days the same type of reward as having been with that group in the upper room? And the reason I say that is from what I just mentioned a moment ago. Remember in 1 Peter, this special group is a group that has an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fades not away, reserved in heaven for you. They are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, which means the end of days. They're rejoicing, even in the heaviness and the temptations and the many full temptations that this life has right now. And even through the trials of our faith, we're still rejoicing and gracious and, and, and celebrating being in love with the Lord. And what does it say? That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth through the trial with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ Jesus, whom having not seen you love, in whom though you see him not yet believing, <clears throat> you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And then what? Having received the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, you see? and yet they're still here. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired diligently who prophesied of the grace beforehand. You see? Until when? Until the appearing of Christ. When does, when does Christ appear to these guys? These guys are a special group that are already a part of the inheritance, incorruptible, reserved in a place in heaven for them, who are kept right now. They're kept secret until the end of days. It almost seems that they may not be a part of those who get to go to that upper room, but the Lord when he comes after the wedding, is rewarding them with the same thing by sitting down at meat with them at the table, reclined with them. Because if you remember in Luke chapter 12, the Lord only does this with the first group. 
and they were told when your Lord returns from the wedding. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down at meat and will come forth and serve them. Does he sit and serve the second watch and the third watch when you go to the end in the resurrection story of Mark and Matthew? No, he does not. The only group he comes to sit down and serve is the Luke group of the first watch. And we see him doing it right here. And the exact typology of what he is doing here is giving them the glory of the upper room honor that it would appear they didn't get to go to because they're chosen to work. But they are so honored in that same portion of people that he comes and honors them by sitting down to eat and serve them that he will not do to any other group because they have also a place reserved for them in heaven but they are kept until his appearing to them when he will open up their understanding and sit at eat with them that's my head exploding isn't this over the top (laughs) this is awesome this is so absolutely awesome it is so man my goodness you want to talk about what jesus said he was going to be doing to them and opening their understanding of the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms concerning him, and he opens their understanding. This is what we are in the midst of for the past five years in this ministry. Not the fulfillment of it. It will be fulfilled and completed by Christ. So remember that Smyrna were called 14thers. And in the ministry where the revelation of the end is being revealed, just as these things here, we are called 14ers. So brothers and sisters, keep watching, keep praying, keep in obedience, keep doing the things that will be rewarded, which is diligently seeking, which is loving him, which is sharing him, which is letting people observe him by seeing how you act in your daily life. There's always somebody watching. Because brothers and sisters, the time is at hand. The 70th is just about up. And there is no other 70 that remains in history for the beginning of all of this as his word told us in the law of Moses. And where? And in the Psalms. And where? And in the prophets. What? Four years and then theirs for the 70. That's the law of Moses. In the Psalms, Psalms 90 and 10, 14 years after the 70. Where? In the prophets, Zechariah, these 70 years hello brothers and sisters i love you i i pray for you every single night i i know you guys are praying for us we appreciate it and praying for each other let's keep it going let's finish strong god is good and his spirit is revealing the word our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen and amen we'll see you soon god bless bye for now